So we've made it to Langland Bay and the tide's all the way out. So we've got access to some really great rock pools. There's lots of seaweed, there's lots of rocks, there's lots of places for all the animals to hide. You don't need to come to Langland. Uh, rock pools can be found at basically any rocky beach. Uh, when the tide goes out, it leaves the rocks bare and where the water is collected in little pools, they just stay here and the animals that are here are stuck in the pools. And they're normally adapted to life in the rock pools, so don't worry. They aren't stranded, they are designed normally to be here. They're sort of little pockets of nature and they're a great place to try and find some really interesting seaside animals. So we're going to have a look and we're going to see what we can find. So why are rock pools interesting? Well, to answer that question, we need to look at what rock pools are. Yes, they are pools in the rocks, but they are so much more than that. It's easy to think of rock pools as saltwater ponds, isolated bodies of water with lots of nooks and crannies for little creatures to hide. But they are different in one very important way. When the tide comes in, all the pools are linked to the sea and each other too. That means the creatures living there get the best of both worlds. Somewhere to hide when the tide is low and free movement to find food and new shelter when the tide is high. So we're down at these rocks, which normally when, when the tide is in, will be fully covered by the water. So we've got a brief period of time where we actually have access to all of these rocks and these rock pools. And there's some really interesting animals and plants that we can find down here. So one of the things we find is these barnacles that cling to the face of the rock all the way along. And you can see they almost like a carpet that covers the whole rock. Um, and if you look behind me, they actually go all the way to the top of the rock or very nearly the top of the rock. And that's how we know that all this is going to be covered by water at some point, because these, these are water creatures that filter feed. They, they, uh, they get little bits of uh, plankton from the water and that's what they eat to survive. Some of the barnacles are more suited to harsh conditions. So for the barnacle, a harsh condition is when there's no sea. So they need, they need the sea around them to survive. They need the sea around them to, to get their food. Uh, so the ones that are at the top are suited to having the sea for the least amount of time of the day because they, the sea is going to drop down fairly quickly and they're not going to have a lot of time in the ocean itself. Whereas these ones at the bottom are more competitive when the sea is around them. So the ones at the top are better suited to harsh conditions, but when the sea is all around them and it's a good condition for them, these guys will outcompete them. On the rocks, we can also see uh, sea snails here. So we've got big ones, various sizes all around here, even little, little tiny ones like this one in here. And we also have limpets which are these little fellows here. They're very, very common. You've probably, if you've been to the seaside, you've almost definitely seen them stuck to a rock. And these guys are really, really well adapted to the sea. They, as you can see, they're kind of asleep now. They're all stuck to the rocks, but when the sea comes up, they'll start moving. And actually, if you come down very early in the day when it's still cold and damp outside, you'll still be able to see them moving around. And that's because it's still damp. But as soon as it starts getting dry, these guys don't want to dry out. Um, they're unlike the snails you see in your garden who are very closely related. They're not well suited to being out in the dry air. So when the sea's not around them in order to stay dry, they clamp down to the rocks really tightly. And actually the limpets are much, much better at it than these guys. Cause these guys, I could kind of pull off the rock if I wanted to, I'm not going to, cause I want to leave them be. Um, but they will come off fairly easily. Um, so these guys tend to be much closer to the sea, whereas limpets you can find much, much further back because they're so good at sticking hard to the rocks. So a major part of the seaside ecosystem is, of course, seaweed. And there's three main types of seaweed. There's green seaweed, red seaweed, like this, and brown seaweed, like this. Now, green seaweed tends to be fairly leafy, greeny. This is called a sea lettuce, and red can be fi fairly fibrous, and sometimes it looks a lot like coral under the water, but it's actually a sort of a red seaweed. And brown seaweed 
uh, is things like kelp. They tend to be, they tend to feel a bit more plasticky. Um, uh, they tend to be a bit larger. They've got these sort of big slippery fronds to them. This is kelp here. Um, now what, how seaweed works is, is it tends to anchor itself to a rock. So using this sort of bit here, this would stick on like this really hard and then it would be able to wave in the water where it's able to photosynthesize. It's interesting because the red and the brown are not the color you'd expect, but they do have chlorophyll in them. They can photosynthesize. But interestingly enough, seaweed isn't actually considered a true plant. Um, they're sort of more of an, of an algae. We've managed to find a common green crab. Um, you can tell these are the crabs that you're most likely to find in the rock pools. Uh, they're sort of greenish in colour, they're found all over Europe. They can be found in a mixture of salinity, so if the water's very salty or not particularly salty, uh, they're still able to thrive. This crab here is, uh, it looks fairly small uh, for a crab, but this is kind of the size that you're most likely to find in a rock pool. An interesting fact about crabs is they're a result of convergent evolution, which means that different species that aren't related to each other have all managed to evolve into the shape of a crab. There are in fact sort of five different groups of crab and they aren't particularly related to each other except they're crustaceans, but they're not closely related and they just happened to evolve this shape uh, exactly the same way. Uh, just because it's such so great at doing the kinds of things that crabs want to do. If you find a crab, you're more likely to find them under rocks and things. Um, you just need to be very careful because these are the animals that are most likely to be able to hurt you because if they've got very sharp claws and they will pinch very hard. So you have to be really careful when you pick them up. And so you just got to grab them by the back and the side. Avoid the legs. Don't get underneath. So you just hold them like that. If we look at the bottom, the little plate underneath. If it's a semicircle, it's a girl, and if it's a little triangle, it's a boy. And in this one, we can see that it's quite a sharp little pointy triangle. So this is a little boy. And we're going to pop him back uh, just so he can be safe. So if you want to rock pull yourself, it's really easy. You only need a couple of things. Uh, so what you need is a net. Uh, which uh, I've got little hand nets here, but you can get longer ones with a bigger net and that makes it a bit easier to get a lot of stuff, uh, especially in some of the deeper rock pools where you might find some of the bigger and more interesting animals. And the second thing you need is something to put what you find in. So I like these white trays because they makes it really easy to see what you've caught, but you can use anything that will hold water. So you can use a bucket or just a sort of a piece of Tupperware, uh, whatever you like. Um, and the first step is just to put some water in your tray. The next step is to use your net and to just wave it through normally to the edges where all the seaweed is. And then you can pull it up. Empty it into your tray. And you can see what you can find. Now a couple of tips are to look close to the seaweed and to the edges of the pool and to check under rocks as well. Another rock pooling tip is to just get into the rock pool. Uh, now we're here on a sort of very cold day, um, but if you're out rock pooling in spring or summer where it's a bit warmer, or even if you've got a good pair of wellies or waders, uh, don't be afraid to just get into the middle of the rock pool and start searching around the edges with your net or even with your hands to look under rocks and things. Uh, just make sure you leave everything as you find it. I hope you've come to find out a little more about these radical rock pools. Keep an eye out for our coasts and dunes videos too. Goodbye. <laughs>